As part of refurbishing a broken down wheelbarrow, I needed to replace the inner tube in this pneumatic tire. To work on the wheel and tire, I had to remove one of the axle brackets so that I could slip the axle out and remove the wheel. They make specialized spoon levers to remove the tire from a wheel, but I just made do with some used up tools I keep in the box in case I want to abuse them some more. It doesn't matter if you puncture the inner tube when removing the old one. So once you get about a third of it over the rim, the rest of it's pretty easy. And you only need to get one side of this tire off the uh, rim of the wheel to snake out the old inner tube and put in the new inner tube. All right, so there's the old inner tube. If you look at this valve stem, you can see it's kind of ripped right there, and that might be the inner tube leak, although there's also, well, here's another leak in the inner tube and so forth. I might have done some of this when I was taking the wheel off. Um, since the inner tube was already not holding air, I wasn't being very careful there and not using the correct tools. When buying a replacement inner tube, make sure you note and match the tire size. You can buy them with a straight valve or a bent valve. I prefer the bent valve to make airing them up easier. Now before I put this thing in, I'm going to vacuum out as much gunk as I can get from the inside um, and the rim of the wheel. I don't want to get anything trapped between the inner tube and the tire or the wheel if possible. The inside of my wheel was quite rusty, so I wrapped it once with gaffer's tape, you could use duct tape instead, to protect the inner tube from the sharp rusty bits. Then I pushed the inner tube around the edge into the tire, making sure the valve stem lined up with the hole in the wheel. Now comes the hardest part, seating the tire into the wheel, without puncturing or pinching the inner tube. This is much easier with the proper spoon levers, but if you are careful, you can make do with a few broken screwdrivers. Once the tire is reseated, air the inner tube up slowly, massaging the tire to make sure you don't get any part of the inner tube pinched inside the bead around the edge of the tire and making sure to keep the valve stem aligned with the hole in the wheel so it is not put under pressure. If your wheel and tire are in okay shape, spending five to ten dollars on a replacement inner tube is the inexpensive option. You can also buy a complete replacement pneumatic wheel and tire for around thirty-five dollars, or for forty-five bucks you can get one of these fancy no-flat foam-filled wheels, which is also a drop-in replacement. I'm a little concerned that the no-flat tire won't provide as much shock absorbing as a pneumatic tire, and it certainly looks like it has a little less surface area, so it may tend to sink into our Florida sand. But I like the idea of never having to change the inner tube again, so I'm going to try it out, and if I don't like it, I can always put the pneumatic tire back on.